Dear learners, good morning. This is Dipankar Dutta, lecturer in English, Anandamohan College, Maimanshin. You know, COVID-19 occurs of mankind that has confined us inside our home so that you can advance your study the program of online class has been started above 200 countries of the world are fighting against the unseen enemy that is corona in our country the curve of the covid patients are rising on but nobody knows where it will stop however let's start our session this class is for the students of honors first year <clears throat> today i'd like to share the idea with you about a fantastic romantic poem i wandered lonely as a cloud written by william wordsworth and my lecture has divided into some points these are <coughs> poet's life and works background of the poem reciting and analyzing figures of speech and important questions learners have you heard the name of william wordsworth yes william wordsworth is a romantic poet he was born on 7th april 1770 at cockermouth in cucumberland and died on 23rd april 1850 he was one of the greatest protagonists of the romantic movement he lost his parents when he was child then he began his career as a poet his earliest verses were composed under the influence of pope and romanticism begins through publishing the book lyrical ballads the prelude the excursion ode on intimations of immortality michael the solitary repair are i wonder lonely as a cloud are his notable creations above all he is called a pantheist and a poet of nature now we'll discuss background of the poem you know i wonder lonely as a cloud is a praiseworthy romantic poem of william wordsworth it is a record of recollection that occurred 2 years earlier and it is a good example of william wordsworth's belief Poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and takes its emotions recollected in tranquility. The poem also reflects in his belief uh, between man and nature and he, the nature's healing power. Now, I will recite the poem I wandered lonely as a cloud and subtitle of the poem is Daffodils. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over veils and hills when all at once I saw a crowd 
a host of golden daffodils. Here, I means the speaker and wander means travel or roam. Then, the speaker traveled alone aimlessly as a pitch of cloud that floats on high over veils and hills. When all at once, at once means suddenly, suddenly he saw a crowd means numerous of the daffodils or a host of golden daffodils. He saw, suddenly he saw a host of golden daffodils and the daffodils were beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze. This lines means the daffodils were beside the lake under the trees and they are moped by the wind. It seemed that the daffodils are fluttering and dancing in the breeze. The second stanza, continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way, they stressed in never ending line along the margin of a bay. These lines means the daffodils were spread over along the margin of a bay as endlessly as the twinkling stars on the milky way. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. Ten thousand saw, ten thousand means the ten thousand daffodils. Suddenly the poet imagined he saw ten thousand daffodils at a glance. And the, and the daffodils, when the daffodils are tossing their heads, happily while dancing. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. This sentence means the waves besides the daffodils also danced and the daffodils defeated the waves in his joyous dancing. To see this, this scene, a poet could not remain unhappy in such cheerful companions. Here, jocund company means cheerful companions. I guessed and guessed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. This sentence means the poet get looked at the daffodils a long time as unconsciously that the show would be a great source of joy in his future. And the last stanza for opt when on my coach I lie in vacant or in pensive mode, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. This sentence means whenever the poet lie down on his coach in vacant or in pensive mode, that show flashes upon in his inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure feels and dances with the daffodils. When he remembered the scene of the be beautiful daffodils, then his heart with his heart filled fills with pleasures and dances with the daffodils. The learners, after reading the poem, you will find some new words. These new words are given here. 
such as wandered means roamed about endlessly a host of means numerous fluttering means moving with sounds twinkle means shine from time to time the milky way means the galaxy tossing means moving to and fro in glee means in happiness and mirth gay means happy jocund means cheerful pensive means thoughtful the bliss of solitude uh, the joy of loneliness then figures of speech you know the poem is full of some figures of speech in this poem we find simile personification and hyperbole these figures of speech are filled in this poem then simile for example the title of the poem i wandered lonely as a cloud is a is an example of simile a question may become so what is simile a simile is an explicit comparison between two this similar things a simile is an explicit comparison between two dissimilar things it may be called an indirect comparison by using s yes or like is used in simile Then I wandered lonely as a cloud. In the in this example, the poet used uses yes. So it is an indirect comparison. Then personification. sir so what is personification the personification is a figures of speech in which lifeless object is given life lifeless objects are given life for example a crowd a host of golden daffodils are an example of personification then hyperbole hyperbole means it is also a figures of speech in which a thing is exaggerated a thing is exaggerated for example in the poem we find the 10000 saw i at a glance it is an example of key hyperbole 
10,000 means 10,000 daffodils. Actually, it is impossible. One cannot count 10,000 daffodils at a glance. It is an emotional outburst. And the figures of speech suggest the uncountable number of the daffodils. Then, dear learners, you know there are three types of questions which come in your final exam. That's been deep question short questions and broad questions. After reading the poem, you will prepare such types of questions. I think that if you try to prepare these questions at your home, the poem seems to very easy to you and understandable such as broad questions number one comment on Wordsworth's treatment of nature in i wandered lonely as a cloud number two how does i wandered lonely as a cloud reflect Wordsworth's poetic three theory and question number three, what are the features of romanticism that you find in I wandered lonely as a cloud? Then short questions. Number one, how does Wordsworth describe the joyous mood of the daffodils? Number two, trace out the romantic elements in the poem. And number three, how does the poet respond to the sight of the daffodils? Then, some brief questions. You will take prefer at your home. Suppose, what is romanticism? What is Romantic revival, what do you understand by the phrase return to nature, who are the lake poets, who is known as the poet of nature, what was the name of Wordsworth's sister, why is Wordsworth famous for, what is pantheism, what is the name of the book composed jointly by Wordsworth and Coldridge. What is daffodils? Where did Wordsworth find the daffodils? How many flowers did the poet see at a glance? And define hyperbole, define simile, etc. So that's all. Thanks to you. Stay at your, your home and save your lives.